going to look at all of them again. And I get a whole lot of them, and I have to start over and look which ones are locally solvable, which ones have points, which ones don't have points. And hopefully, I will reach a point <coughs> where everything that is locally solvable has points. So that is the problem of the algorithm, that we do not know uh, whether SHA is finite. That would be what is happening here, the four torsion of SHA. If my SHA group has no elements of order four, then all of those that are locally solvable here would have points. Okay? But if there is a four torsion point, I might find it here. And I have to go one layer up. So I would be able to go to some layer where that doesn't happen, but we do not know that SHA is finite. So for all we know, there could be some SHA that has two torsion, four torsion, eight torsion, sixteen torsion, and so on and so forth forever, and my algorithm would my algorithm in quotes would never end. We do not know that. The conjecture is that SHA is always finite, and it is proof in some cases that it's finite. But we do not know in general that all the elliptic curves have finite SHA. Okay. Yes. So, are these C delta delta curves? So, those are called, these are twists okay. of elliptic curve. So, these are some other, this, this first layer, these are some uh, other, like, genus 1 curves. Okay. Well, we put the these are genus 1 and then these are ones to make the further. No, because these are genus 1 curves that I don't know if they have any points. So, I don't, I don't have an origin to begin to do the, 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 the everything we know. So these are just some genus one curves that are some like uh, abstract twists of of the elliptic curve itself, and then you're trying to find points in those, but whether there are points or not. So you're trying to say if they are elliptic curves themselves or not. I can maybe you answer there, but how do you get the equations for the further twists then? Well, that, that is a problem that, I mean, these ones I already, I showed you how to do it. These ones are already quite tricky and I think Magma can do four descents. Can you do eight descents mm -hmm. at this point? Mm -hmm. So Magma has implemented two descents, four descents, and then eight descents and nothing else. There's no farther descent. The, the equations just get too, too complicated to, to write down. And I think there are, there are several descents that we don't include five descents, three descents, but um, it just gets very complicated how to find those equations. If you take a real, car, a real course on elliptic curves, this whole picture comes after the fact. You define the Selmer group from cohomology, and the Selmer classes are cohomology classes, and out of the cohomology you can come up with algebraic equations for those, and those correspond to those are written here. So, um, to, to find out from the cohomology explanation of the uh, uh, 17 descent, what are the equations that give you those homogeneous spaces, it's just it's very hard to, to do, and then in the, in the implementation would take forever if we actually know how to do it. Okay? Yeah? So, what so this is this is the, the easiest descent that I've presented um, because you have the full two torsion. There is another descent that is uh, easy to implement, that is the two isogeny descent, which is the case when you have just one point being rational. That's also easy to implement. When you have no points of two torsion defined over Q, what you have to do is like, well, I want my points to be defined over the base field, so I increase my base field. So you go up, essentially you go up to a field where you have a point, and then work there and do everything again, but at that level, in the number field, and then try to bring them to see what there was actually defined over in the first place. There are workarounds, you don't have to actually go to a number field, but basically that's the idea. So. For, a, for an elliptic curve that has no, um, uh, for an elliptic curve that has uh, no two torsion defined over Q, the algorithm is a lot more difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. 
No. No. There's a, again, there is a way to create these uh, uh, without. You don't need to, to have the. For those to be just to, to do it over queue, you don't need the the fourth portion to be defined over queue. Um, but but there is a machinery that you have to do to be able to do that all over queue that basically involves going up to a number field and working there and coming back. Okay. So I have like 10 minutes left to talk about the virtual series of layer conjecture, uh, which is the following. So we've done some algebraic methods and uh, maybe succeeded to some extent that we can actually, at, at least for small coefficients, we can get around and find the rank. So uh, are there analytic ways to find the rank? Is there an analytic approach to find or estimate the rank? Well, that is exactly what um, uh, Brian Birch and Sooner Than Dyer uh, were trying to do in the 60s. So, uh, Birch and uh, Schoenerton Dyer had uh, the following uh, idea, which is that uh, if I have an elliptic curve, and if this elliptic curve has high rank, I can try to see those, I don't, I don't know how to find them, but if I reduce modulo p, I go to a finite field, and then there's only finitely many numbers to play with, but if there are points of infinite order, many of those should reduce, and I should see many points of finite order also. With finite order, I can just do a finite computation and find all the points and see how many there are over there. So there is this thing that's called, called the reduction, of an elliptic curve, and then I'm working with my elliptic curve, uh, but with points modulo p. So now this is going to be e tilde, and e is now defined over fp. Now the problem is that I can go down and start with an elliptic curve, and all of a sudden here I get something that's singular. Okay, so I have to be worried about that first. So from e to e tilde, I can get uh, I can get good reduction. Those, by the way, are the primes that do not divide the discriminant of my elliptic curve. I can get bad reduction, where the reduction curve is no longer an elliptic curve because there is a singularity. I do like this as if that meant something over FP, but we, we sort of imagine there is a singularity, although the curve is just a bunch of points somehow on the plane. Um, so there are now several types of reduction. There is additive reduction if, again, a picture that applies maybe over the reals, not over the, but the same equations, you look at the, uh, at the derivatives and you can sort of make sense of the derivatives the same way. If there is a cost in the reduction, we say that that's additive. Or there is a multiplicative reduction if I get a node, right? Farther, multiplicative reduction, there is two types, which is these two tangents have slopes, and the slopes can be defined over FP or over your base field or not defined over the base field. If they are defined over the base field, that's split slopes in FP, or non-split 
if the slopes are not in FP. Okay? But it doesn't matter for what version of the data we're doing, it doesn't matter, there's only because of this condition, these all these bad reduction only occur for primes divided into discriminants, so it's only finitely many primes to worry about. So forget about those for now. Okay? Forget about the bad primes and reduce. So what they thought is that, okay, maybe for P2, 3, 5, I'm not going to be able to see much. But as P increases, I should be able to start seeing that I have more points over FP than normal if my rank is high. Okay, because the points, if you have a rational point, for most primes I'm going to be able to reduce them, and in fact, all primes, I'm going to be able to reduce them if you take them in projective coordinates. You might be worried about primes in the denominator. Just take it in projective coordinates. You can make it all integer coefficients and reduce those. So you reduce those and you start getting points modulo p. So what they thought is that np should be elevated if the rank is high. Okay? So let's try to put them, how are we going to try to do some sort of average of all the NPs. How did they decide to package those was as a product. So let's look at all of them. Look at the product of P bigger equal to one. Yeah. Two of uh, good primes and uh, look at the, the ratio of NP over P and see how it grows, okay? By the way, what they knew uh, by, there's a theorem, Hasse, uh, that tells you that the number of points on an elliptic curve for a prime of good reduction is between p plus 1 plus 2 the square root of p and p plus 1 minus 2 the square root of p. So it's in the ballpark of, of p, since p is a subscript. Okay? It's in the, in the ballpark of p, or it's like the ballpark of p plus 1, so you want to know there's this variation, it goes in that interval, so you want to know, so you want to normalize it dividing by P and see how much variation, and if there is rank, you expect that it's going to be leaning towards this side more often than not. Okay, so look at this, and uh, let's, let's cap it with X and see how this grows as X goes to infinity. <coughs> And what they found uh, that uh, this function grows like constants that depends on the elliptic curve and the logarithm of x to the rank. Okay? So you could actually tell from the data of this graph what the rank was, more or less. Okay? So, um, so then they started to, they showed this to some people, I believe, it was dog and four that they told them, like, you, you should put this in some other way, or probably realize that this is, um, I think it was they. They? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so they later noticed that, well, you, you know, NP is actually uh, P plus 1 minus AP, where AP is a trace of Frobenius, it's something called a trace of Frobenius. So this function is approximately the value, the value in quotes, 
uh, S equals 1 off. So instead of both, let's see how it goes to 0 if we flip it, 1 over that function. And what they did is look instead at this one. Okay, does that does that work? So what happens at s equals one? If you just just evaluate, let's see what happens. You get the product of 1 over 1 minus AP times P to the minus 1 plus P 1 minus 2 minus 1. So what I get is, uh, let's multiply through by P this, uh, this product. I get P divided by 1 minus AP uh, plus P. So it's P plus 1 minus AP. P divided by that. This is NP. So this is the product of P divided NP. So it's the, the reciprocal of the function they had considered. Okay? So what they now, that log of X is like X, right? So if this grows like X to the RE, then this function should have a zero of order RE. Okay? So this one should have a zero of order RE at S equals one. Now the problem is that this uh, product, um, is, we don't know that it converges at S equals one. We didn't know that it converges at S equals one. So, uh, so later, so now you can repackage this again and define, you've probably now, uh, you've seen that appear in, in the construction of the functions of modular forms in key scores, and you can define the uh, Hasse Bay L function. E as L E S equal product of one over L P P to the minus S for primes where uh, so I'm going to now I'm going to put the bad prime also uh, so there is one minus A P T plus P T squared for good primes. 1 for additive primes, 1 minus t for split multiplicative, split multiplicative, and 1 plus t for non-split multiplicative. And then the conjecture, the refined conjecture was that you can calculate the, uh, the rank of the elliptic curve numerically by calculating the order of vanishing of the, of the L function. So the order of vanishing at S equals 1 of L E S is the rank. So in other words, the, um, if you write a Taylor series at S equals 1, of the L function of this complex body function, the Taylor series should have, should start with around S equals 1, and should start with S minus 1 to the R, blah, 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 okay? Now that Taylor series will have a constant in front of that first term, and they actually go on to the, the even more refined conjecture that tells you what that residue, what that value is, and it involves You've seen number theory, you've seen algebraic number theory, the analytic class number formula. There is something, that some theorem of this sort that is an analytic class number formula that relates the, that relates the, the, um, the residue at one of the dedicated set of functions with 
essentially all the main uh, invariants of a number field. And here also, I won't write it down, but you also see that the residue at s equals 1, it relates with the size of Sha, the rank of the elliptic curve, the regulator of the points, the, um, it relates to the very specific information about re the reduction of the bad primes and the size of the torsion subgroup. All those packaged together give you the, uh, what the residue is going to be over there, uh, plus the, uh, a period, some integral that tells you some, some R length. Um, so I just wanted to show you, since we've talked about this elliptic curve for a while, and I wanted to change to stage for a while, uh, just at least once, because uh, Magma does not have the, uh, an interface, a graphical interface, but with Sage, you can grab these things. So if you take 50, uh, 77A1, the first elliptic curve by conductor rank 3, you can define its L series. That's the Hasebe L series. You can evaluate it at 1, and you see that it has a 0. Remember that elliptic, elliptic curve has rank 3, so the order of vanishing should be 3. Um, and you can calculate the Taylor series, see what it looks like. Oh, it, BSB is false. There is a zero of order one. Not so much, numerically not so much, because this is, the coefficient is 10 to the minus 22. So it's probably a zero. This is probably a zero. And the first non-zero coefficient is 1.8, and it goes with ZQ. So it, it indicates that there should be a triple zero at uh, S equals one. Okay. This is the L series, the Taylor series around one of uh, up to uh, I don't know why it goes up to C this thing, but anyway, uh, I thought it was up to C to four. And you can plot. So you see that the, the graph of the, the real values of the L function, it does certainly look like there is a triple tangency at S equals one, as it should from the BSD. So uh, I'll finish here. There's a little more detail on the BSD conjecture in the notes in chapter five. It's something very important I didn't get to talk about, the connection between modular forms and elliptic curve, the, the theorem of modularity, and that's also, uh, there's a, a, a longer exposition there in, um, in chapter five, um, which I think Keith alluded to in his course too, about what, what modular forms have uh, uh, infinite products and so on and so forth. So you can read some of that in there. So I'll finish here.